You may not recognize the studio that I'm in. This is actually Sean's studio. Hey. I came out to visit Sean because A, he's my friend, and B, he had some issues. In front of us is the Prusai 3 Mark III. You know, this is a, as a really decent 3D printer, but we weren't getting decent results. Not even a little bit, unfortunately. But we are now. That's what's on the build plate. What Sean and I are going to do is tell you about the troubleshooting that we went through to find out what was wrong with the machine, how we fixed it, and how we went from a terrible print to what you see on the build plate. And we're going to do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Well done. Yeah. Nailed it. This episode of 3D Printing Nerd is sponsored by PrintLab.com. Get 20% off site-wide for the next seven days using code 3DPN. When I was in Seattle, Sean actually texted me. He said, I'm having an issue with my Prusa machine. It's never really printed well that I can remember. Here's an example of what's going on. And he showed me this. This is a bomb. -bom. It is done by Chaos Cortex, That's actually. Right. You can find it on Thingiverse. Um, it's really easy to print, flat bottom. No supports, pretty awesome. However, just nothing but, what would you even call that on the front here? I would say extrusion issues. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like someone just, just scratched it all up in the front, basically. Right, and yeah. my guess was he was having an issue with the nozzle because the model itself, it looked like butt up front, but in the back, <laughs> it looked fine. Yeah. And my, my initial indication was that an irregular extrusion or uh, an out of shape orifice on the nozzle was probably the cause of this. Right. So just to verify, I said, Sean, why don't you print this again, but why don't you rotate the model 180 degrees on Z or Z? So I did. And? The exact same thing happened, however, this time on the back. Perfect. Right. We have proved what you thought was was an issue. Well, we proved that it wasn't a model issue. Right. We proved that it was the machine itself causing the issue on that side of the model, right? Yep. You know, of course, I've felt pretty doom and gloom. I've had a lot of issues with it, right? Doom so, and gloom, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just, oh gosh, you know what? What else can go wrong with my printers? Because I'm just having some bad luck. But well, at see, this point, I actually came to visit you. Yeah, I showed yeah, up. Right. At this point, we had already made it. We made uh, the, the decision to have you come to Michigan, which was right. great. We had a meetup. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. And when we got home, you were just like, we need to fix this. That's right. Yeah, it was one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and we were fixing the machine. And one of the things I wanted to do was print something that was known good, a known good G code. So right. on the 3D printer SD card, there is a Prusa bottle opener. And that is right here. The sidewalls look great on it, but there is a definite extrusion issue because the top layers are no good at all. Yeah, it just, it feels really rough. Like someone had sand, or it needs to be sanded to be sanded smooth, basically. And yeah. my thinking was that this proves further that it's a nozzle irregularity because the nozzle that's on the machine isn't able to lay down a smooth extrusion of plastic. It's either too tall, too narrow, or it's not its not shaped as it should be. And so at this point, Sean and I thought, well, let, let's replace the nozzle. He's got a hardened steel nozzle that he wants to put on there, so why don't we do that? Once we got the old nozzle off. Which is right here, by the way, and it is just it's, horrendous. It's, <laughs> It's terrible. Yeah. Uh, we followed the Prusa video that shows how to take the nozzle off. Just really quickly, you heat it up to 285C, you unscrew the heater block just a little bit with a with a wrench. With a wrench, yeah. And then you use a seven millimeter socket, Correct. I think it is, to loosen up the nozzle, yep. take it off, be careful it's hot. Then you put the new nozzle on, tighten it up, and then you tighten the heater block back into place. It's a really easy, simple procedure. And if you have yourself a Prusa machine, at least that uh, that procedure for replacing a nozzle, totally easy. You should definitely give it a shot sometime if you ever think you're having issues. And any E3D V6 would be very similar. Yeah, any it's running an E3D V6. Right. So really, I mean, anything that's running that is gonna be similar in, in how you replace the nozzle. We actually looked at the nozzle yeah. and <laughs> right. you can tell the orifice on it is quite irregular and the end of the nozzle isn't flat anymore. What Sean and I were talking about was he, he's got some some flush cutters and he has in the past as we all have used the flush cutters to kind of trim or scrape right. some of the filament yep. off the nozzle right yeah just just running down the nozzle and i would probably when it was a little too hot still hot brass is soft and so the guess is the flush cutters probably nipped off the end of the nozzle and right. made the orifice irregular correct so now with a new nozzle we decided to print the bottle opener again how does it look it looks much better this time just a much smoother surface finish. You can actually, Joseph looks much better. Yeah, he does. He does look great. Right. Well, and it, it proves that with a more, an appropriate extrusion, it looks great. Right. So this, I mean, this will work, but it doesn't look right. So once we have 
a nozzle outputting the correct shape, size, and amount of filament, then we have a, a good Joseph. Right, and I, and I, what's crazy is that when I looked at this, I'm like, oh, it's not bad. And, <laughs> you know, because I was just so used to that sure. printer printing like this. And then when this came out, I'm like, wow, that's just, just night and day difference. Just from swapping the nozzle at that point. Which is great too. So right. now we've proved that the nozzle was an issue. Right. So we reprinted the bob bomb, right? Yep. We and reprinted that. And how that, did that turn out? Well, as you can see, not so great. <laughs> well, this, besides the issues with the gyroid infill, you right. can easily see that there are layer shifts. Yep, right through here, layer shifts all the way. And we saw that pretty much immediately. You know, this is only probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes into the print or whatever it is, that, that's just multiple shifts. And the guess was, well, you know what? It's, it's this filament, perhaps it's bad. Maybe it's not extruding correctly. Let's just try it with another filament. It's super easy to do. And here it is. And same exact issue. The exact issue, like yeah. the exact same yeah. issue. Shifts in very similar spots. Actually, I think maybe even more shifts. So it was not the filament. At no, that it point. wasn't. So after that, what did we do? We decided to tighten a few things up. That's right. On the printer. Yeah, we tightened up the Y belt, which I thought might have been an issue as well uh, initially. It wasn't super loose. Right. But it was loose enough to where uh, I was able to stretch it and add another tooth just to the grip. So yep. just one more tooth length of belt, and it was. It's good now, it's good. But the more important thing, and I think the thing that fixed it was... So then we tightened the grub screws on the pulley. That's right. Right, yeah. And that, I think, was the, the real culprit, probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the belt, one, I wasn't one sure. One notch, probably. Not, I mean, yeah. it, will, it will ensure better quality. Right. But with the way that the layers were skipping so randomly, right. it had to be something that was loose. And the only other thing in operation was the pulley. Right. So we tightened down the grub screws. Yep. And, well, here. It's right here on the print bed. Oh, it just popped right up. It popped right up. Oh, well, that's, that is fantastic. Do, do, do. Right. And How does it look? Beautiful. I think we did a really good job with troubleshooting because I think the bob bomb hair looks fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it, it smooth finish all the way. I feel like I can actually run my finger across this and it's nice and smooth here as well. No zits, no warping, no someone scratching up the surface, <laughs> right? What I like, on this model, uh, you can see that there are uh, layer shifts and inconsistencies right here right. and right here. And that's because as the belt travels, if that pulley is loose, then it's not gonna be in the same spot where if you look right here, it's consistent here and it's consistent here, having to yeah. jump back and forth. So Correct. we've got we've got ourselves a really good bob bomb thanks to troubleshooting. Yeah, exactly. And troubleshooting that you can do on pretty much any printer. Any machine. This is very 3D printing 101. This is right. very easy troubleshooting. Sorry that it took you flying from Seattle to, <laughs> for me to do it, but uh, thank God you did. Well, I'm glad I was able to help out, and I think it's great fodder for a video because I don't want anyone out there viewing this to think that troubleshooting is too hard. You know, some people right. think they don't want to they don't want to break their printer. If something's right. wrong, they're afraid to fix it because they don't want to break it. And that and, was exactly my my issue. Like well, you know, and not and and having you here to do those things, like it, it makes me feel much more comfortable seeing you do it. Okay, I can do that. Right. You know, and that's that that's a big benefit and, and hopefully next time you won't need to come to Michigan for it. <laughs> so as a follow-up, uh, let's talk about a few things. One, it's very simple to replace the nozzle on an E3D V6. Right. And we showed that. We referenced the Prusa video that they put out right. because it's very simple steps. And we just wanted to make sure we were doing exactly what they recommended. But yeah. that's gonna be the same for any E3D V6 system. Mm -hmm. And if you want to upgrade to a hardened steel nozzle or a plated nozzle or a ruby nozzle, then it's it's really just a couple minutes as long as you have the right tools. It was, uh, we'll put a link to the nozzle and everything mm -hmm. we talk about down in the description right. if, you, if you need to have yourself a shopping list. Correct. Yeah, uh, and then you mentioned something about the hardened steel nozzle that I might have to deal with some irregularities in temperature, right? Right. Uh, typically, brass conducts heat better than hardened steel. And if you go to a hardened steel nozzle, usually you may have to print a little bit higher temperature, 5 to 10 degrees Celsius right. more. Also, hardened steel is going to have PLA stick to it a little bit more than brass. Oh. So you do have the the problem sometimes of filaments sticking to the nozzle a little bit more. Gotcha. But, but leading into our next thing, having the proper tools is really gonna take care of that. So right. we have ourselves one Filament Friday toolkit. Chuck Hellebuck, you know him. He has a fantastic channel and he's always uh, showing you how to modify and fix your Ender 3s and your CR10 minis. Uh, he's got himself a toolkit. Right what we really yeah. liked about this, Sean went out and purchased this. This isn't a, a promo kit from Chuck. Sean went out and purchased this himself 
And what did we use from inside this? So these. These are um, just wire brushes. Right. Right, and that's what we used to kind of get all, because there was a bunch of gunk on that, on that nozzle that was there, the brass nozzle. And we used these to, uh, we warmed it up and just, you know, just scrubbed the crap out of it. Right, yeah. what, was, what was really great is uh, not only was there plastic and just gunk, like you said, on the nozzle itself, but right. on the heater block as right. well. Yeah. And these are great for removing that. So you can heat it up a bit, you scrape it. You just have to be careful of your heater core and your thermistor wires, but those are easy to watch out for, just like when changing a nozzle. And when you're scraping it with these, you get all that plastic ickiness off. And it's just a good maintenance routine for your printer. You don't have to buy a film at Friday Toolkit to get wire brushes because Absolutely those not. are available everywhere, but there's lots of other cool stuff in there. And since Sean doesn't have a lot of tools himself, it's a really handy kit to have. Absolutely. Uh, lots of cool stuff. Calipers, uh, like I said, flush cutters, glue stick, a cutting board, uh, razor blades, uh, a little bag to carry everything in. There's, there's just, there's, there's a ton of stuff in here and it's great. But beyond that, if you get yourself a 3D printer, a lot of times they come with tools that are used for changing the nozzle or fixing the printer or tightening you know, bolts or screws or anything. So Correct. along with separate tools that you can get, don't forget to keep the tools and the accessories that come with your 3D printer. The Prusa machine comes with needle nose pliers, screwdrivers, hex keys, and uh, gummy bears. Yep. Those are long gone, obviously. Yeah, but no, everything that I just found. mentioned is really gonna help in maintaining your machine. Yeah, extra and, screws too as well. Right, a giant bag of spare parts. Right. It's really handy. Yes, exactly. I kept them in the the uh, PLA box that he sent with it, just for easy. I know Chuck's comes with a bag, but really keep it in the box. Yeah. So now that Sean has a well-functioning Mark III, yeah. I want to uh, hear in the comments what you think he should print on that next, because Sean is due to create a really cool 3D printing video for the channel. And if he could get some good suggestions as to what to print on this machine, leave it down in the comments below. Um, yeah. People can vote. You know what? If someone's already suggested something that you think is cool, give it a thumbs up. Obviously, I get to pick at my discretion and at Sean's discretion, but just recommend some really cool stuff. We'd love to see what you say. I'm excited for that, actually. I'd love to print something like that. That'd be awesome. Well, uh, we've we've identified the issues. Yes. We kind of showed them how to troubleshoot and we gave them some good advice. I agree. And I think, like I said, we, this can help lots of people for all sorts of printers. And I think that was the purpose, like why we decided that we should probably do this video. Right. Yeah. If, if I think it's going to help Sean, it's probably going to help one or two of you out there. And so I'm glad you now know that. Uh, any final thoughts? No, it's great having you here, uh, not just for the the fixing of the of the printers, but just, you know, you get to live my life for a little bit and it was uh, hopefully, hopefully fun for you. That's true. Well, in grand fashion, this is Sean's studio. Sean, I'm gonna tuck away, you finish it up.